Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is the fifth part of the tutorial. Uh, let's see, what are we doing here? Um, so, unfortunately, my upload speed has slowed down a little bit. Uh, and the reason for that is, you know, uh, work's starting to pile on, and, you know, other things are getting in the way. And it really sucks, because I enjoy doing these videos. So, you know, this is kind of like my fun time. <laughs> so, let's continue uh, this with this tutorial. Uh, let's, let's think about what we're going to do next. So, we've just gotten two runes, and we finished Orc, and we finished Lair, and we finished all early dungeon. So the next step is to go to vaults. Now, vaults is a fairly dangerous uh, place. I'm going to go less into detail about the particular um, my gripes with the place because I've done that plenty enough times. So there's, I guess, no real reason to do that. Instead, we're just going to go talk about the specific enemies and what kind of things we need to be aware of. So vaults is a little bit like dungeon. Uh, if dungeon was crammed into five floors, you get a lot of high and uh, high health, kind of dangerous enemies, and they come in big swarms. It's kind of like uh, depth, but a it's like the pre uh, pre depth, I guess. So let's let's go in. Now the special thing that you need to know about vaults first off is that you can't even enter without a rune. So that's good, I guess. Uh, when I first started playing, you know, I had never seen vaults before. I went in and immediately got destroyed by a dragon. Uh, I had no idea what was going on at the time, but it looked really cool. So we found our first uh, enemy. This is called the Iron Brand Convoker. I think of them as Power Rangers because they come in very different chromatic colors. Uh, the yellow one, so the Convoker, he can. You see that little flag in his uh, portrait? That means he's calling his allies. So that means after a couple of turns, he's going to come in with a lot of friends. And because Vault's enemies are dangerous, you know you don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to back off, and you can see the friends came. Uh, his allies came. I'm going to back off and I'm not going to fight this whole engagement right now. I'm going to pull back all the way near the entrance. I'm going to make sure that the Convoker is not in line of sight for as long as possible, and I'm going to kill him when he comes around the corner. Great. Alright, good. Let's continue on. So we can also see some low-level Orcs here. Uh, they're also a common enemy here, but they're not really worth mentioning too much. Uh, we, we already know how to deal with those. They're very vanilla, 10-speed enemy. Oh! I fell through a shaft. Okay, so we didn't get shafted at all this game, so this is a good uh, place to start. So what do we do when we're shafted? Now, I guess the answer, the best possible answer, is you ex start exploring very slowly. Don't take, uh, don't rush, don't auto explore, because there's no escape. See here, normally if there was an upstairs, I'd be much happy about this, but because there isn't, I have nowhere to back off to, pretty much. Uh, I don't even know what the floor upstairs is going to look like, so this is pretty dangerous. My first priority is going to have to be, um, my first priority is going to have to be finding an upstairs. So I'm going to, I'm going to just slowly, slowly explore. These are boggarts, so they can summon a lot of enemies instantly. Uh, but if you kill them quick enough, they don't summon too much. Uh, the best way to deal with them is just focus them and not the summons, uh, like most summoners, I guess. Alright, so I'm, I'm, I'm just slowly, slowly exploring through. I'm not taking too much, uh, too many risks. I'm not auto-exploring because, you know, that has a chance of um, putting us in a bad spot accidentally with no escape. So I found my upstairs. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to explore the top floor now. I don't need to, uh, you know, go back down for now. So this character has quite a bit of resist, so most elemental damage will not be doing too much. Uh, see this Convoker? If you kill him fast enough, he actually can't chance... Uh, finish his recall. So sometimes the best idea is to uh, not let him finish the recall at all. Uh, so there's a Ogre Mage here. I just wanted to take care of it. You can kind of guess where the mage is, so you you know, you can figure out where to kill. And that's kind of Yeah, that's that's I don't know, that's intuitive, I guess. Uh, we passed over the red ranger, so the um, Sentinel. Wait, the warden, sorry. Uh, I'm not going to talk about him until there's an actual display of his effects. I'm going to wait until, you know, we see him in action. Uh, this green guy, uh, he is the Iron Heart Preserver. So what he does is he, every time you attack an enemy, he has a chance to absorb some of that damage on his own body and heal himself. I'm oh, sorry, and take the damage for his ally. So he's kind of sacrificial. He can also heal himself, I think. But what he does is he makes the enemies ever so slightly tougher to kill. Uh... Honestly, he's probably the least threatening enemy in of, of the uh, new Iron Brand. 
enemies. Okay, so, but in this scenario, he's kind of good. Because what he does is, he sits here, and all these trolls attack me, and every time I attack them back, the trolls, uh, the damage I do to the trolls gets kind of absorbed by the, um, the preserver. So what I did there was, by forcing him, by standing in this corner, he has to keep moving back and forth, because his AI tells him to, and that means he can't absorb most of the hits from these trolls. So, yeah, that was good. Wasn't exactly intentional, but, you know, sometimes positioning is not does not have to be intentional, it's just sometimes really good. Uh, there's an invisible thing here, I'm gonna use control swing to just kind of hit in the general direction or something. I'll, I'll kill it. Uh, invisible things are not dangerous to this character right now. He's far too strong. Uh, there's nothing in this shop that I want. Yeah, it's just armors that aren't very good. Okay, and now we've reached D2 again. Uh, these, blue ring, uh, these blue sentinels so the Bolt Sentinels, they are dangerous because they have the ability to mark you. It's the same as stepping on an alarm trap, so they've done that right now. So the entire floor is going to be looking for me. So my first priority is heading back upstairs to cleared area. If I do that, I can wait the mark out. Uh, mark is almost useless on empty floors, so you want to always be on an empty floor when you're marked. Uh, the best way to deal with them is have a bit of MR, or kill them really quickly before they can mark you. Uh, I usually don't bother with MR because you know, the obvious, even though it's dangerous, okay, I let that yellow guy um, summon his dude, that's okay, I'm going to back off there. I backed off in the wrong place, so I'm going to go back this way. Even though I take a bit more damage, I want to be a bit more safe, so there you go. Alright, so, as I was saying, um, even though the blue guy's effects are really dangerous, it's actually not so dangerous that it's almost lethal when you, like, I guess... Oh, I got a Abyss in turn. Okay, so that guy... So the purple elf there has the ability to Abyss you and summon demons. Um, the second I got in line of sight of that guy, he Abyssed me. So it's bad luck, I guess. But at two runes, this character should be strong as strong as possible. So, uh, sorry, he should be strong, more than strong enough to handle the Abyss, I suppose. Uh, I'm actually going to teleport out. So while we're here, I guess we can talk about the Abyss a little bit more. Oh, I've been brainless. That's not good at all. Um, okay, so the Abyss is an area that is randomly generated, uh, and it's permanently gener self-generating, I guess. You can't, um, find a, an end to the Abyss. It always... Okay, I need to kill this thing. Okay, I need to leave. Okay, so what's happening here is this character is getting Abyss, and it's not helping. He's in a lot of trouble. Uh, even though I said that it would be okay. I took a couple of bad hits and yeah, it really screwed me over. Okay, so I'm going to keep my Trog's hand up uh, while I talk. Now, okay, so the Abyss is an area that is pretty much a consistent fight. It's almost always fighting. So the way you counter this is you just always run. You never fight. You just fight only when you're in the safest possible position. You're not going to take any damage from the fight. That's it. You don't want to ever take damage. Uh, pretty much. You want to be constantly, you know, moving. You want to be, uh, you don't want to plant your feet, I guess, and then just fight everything that comes close, because there's no point. Uh, you're gonna, you're not gonna get anything from it, ex except for EXP, I guess. And I'm doing this now, I'm just kind of, you know, running in a single direction, so I don't, I don't accidentally loop around for no reason. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just running right, pretty much. Up and down, I guess. Uh, and I'm looking for a way out or a way in, uh, so a way deeper. So the Abyss also holds a room, and this will probably be my third room. Uh, I'm not sure though, because honestly I should be doing the Vault's room, because that's more, I guess, standard for, for these kind of characters. Uh, actually, I, I think I will do that. I, I'll, I'll do the Vault's... You know what, I'll do this game as a 5 room game, just so I can cover all the possible 3 room games. Uh, 3 room, um, you know... Uh, what do you call it? The three, the po all the possible third runes. Uh, I'll, I'll cover all of them, and if I can't, well, I'll have to just. Okay, so this is a bone dragon. It's very tough. I'm gonna summon a brother in arms, and we can just fight it. Okay, good. I'm gonna make sure that my brother is following me, uh, so that I don't accidentally lose him, and then you know he just goes away for no reason. All right, he timed out. That's fine. Okay, I'm just gonna keep heading right. That's okay. Uh, there's a portal into the deeper into the abyss, so I might as well just keep going, I guess. Um, 
Going deeper into the abyss increases the spawn rate, but once you hit abyss 3, there's a chance that there's a rune there, so I do want, I kind of want to go get it. I know it's pretty irresponsible to just get the rune once you get abyss, but I've done it a lot of times now. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave. I'm going to do the resp Never mind, I'm not going to leave. Uh, so yeah, one of the issues about abyss is that it randomly teleports you from time to time. Um, so it was teasing me, I guess. It, it wanted me to go to abyss and then... Uh, it wanted me to go out, and then it didn't let me go out. So, uh, yeah, the Abyss is a jerk. Uh, I suggest not going into deeper than Abyss 3. Abyss 3 is the minimum level of getting a rune, and it's pretty much the safest out of all the rune levels. So, yeah, uh, even though there's portals that go deeper, I don't want to go any deeper. It's it's There's a higher chance, of course, of getting a rune, but I don't really need a higher chance. I just need a way to get a rune. I, wouldn't, I don't want to risk... I don't want to increase the damage. Uh, that was a lurking horror. It's like this black ball thing, and if it touches you, similar to uh, the old spores that used to be a thing, uh, they do the same thing, but they torment you instead of uh, doing just flat damage. Again, I'm in, I'm in a uh, fairly, you know, dangerous spot, so I'm gonna teleport. Hopefully, I can run away without getting killed. That right, good. It's gonna keep moving down, I guess. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter what direction you pick in the abyss, as long as you pick one, and you just stick to it. It means that you uncover the most tiles, I guess. There's no chance of you repeating your tiles. Uh, but when I mean that, I mean, like, you're supposed to try to reveal tiles to... You know, the more tiles you reveal, the better chance you have of getting an abyss room, right? Uh, so I'm just going in one direction constantly. Uh, it doesn't really matter what direction, so I'm going to go up now, I guess. Uh, as long as you get the... Yeah, so this character is having a little bit of trouble with the Abyss Rune, mostly because, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, I'm not at the level where I could be to take this rune on, but uh, sometimes it's it works out okay, so who knows. Uh, this protection from Cold Ring, I don't really need. Yeah, so one of the main things about this place is that it has a ton, and I mean a ton, of mutations, uh, and that's the scariest part. So I'm trying very hard not to die, uh, but I, as you can see, I'm getting mutated quite badly. There's a uh, the Starcast wretch, wretches, I guess they're called. They can actually. Okay, I might actually die here. I'm gonna quaff heal wounds. Uh, I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Quaff heal wounds. Quaff heal wounds. And I'm gonna throw the vial of floods as well. Uh, I need to quaff heal wounds again uh, soon. But I want to hopefully regenerate. Yeah, okay, good. I managed to teleport away before that thing tormented me again. Okay, so I can't really explain too much about how the enemies in Abyss work. They all are individually dangerous, and honestly, Abyss is just about learning what can mutate you and what can't. Most enemies that can mutate you are dangerous, enemies that can't mutate you aren't. Okay, so this is a Rune Vault. You can tell because they're usually very special. Uh, I'm going to pull back a second, and then I'm going to use my. Blink scroll to get close to the rune. I'm going to pick the rune up and I'm going to teleport away. Okay, so those these these maelstroms um, and spatial vortexes they have a chance to just randomly blink you and do distortion effects when they attack you. So I'm trying to get into a corner where I don't die. Uh, I'm going to quaff another heal wounds. I'm going to. I'm not teleporting anymore. That's really scary. I thought I was. Okay. Can I use fear? Uh, no, I can't. Okay, can these seem visible? Uh, they cannot. Okay, good. So basically what I did just then was a quick check, I suppose you could say. I basically uh, looked at my inventory, I looked at what these guys, what the weakness is for these guys, and then I just started, I just, I guess, abused the fact that they can't seem visible to give myself a defensive buff. If they're invisible, if, um... If they cannot see invisible and I am invisible, they have a difficulty hitting me and they might not even find me, so they just they'll wander around randomly. So I, I abuse that fact a little bit to you know get out safely. Uh, that was of course a very dangerous thing, but at the end of the day, this character is lower level than you would expect for an abyss character. Usually you'd see about level 23, maybe 24, um, up to of course 27 as your abyss rune, so you know, it makes sense. Okay, I managed to get out. Excellent. So let's continue with the uh, vaults, I guess. We'll continue down to four, and then we will stop. 
And the reason why we stop at 4 is because the 5th floor is incredibly dangerous. I consider the 5th floor to be so dangerous, in fact, that uh, despite vaults being the recommended 3rd room, I usually don't ever get it. Uh, I think it's far too dangerous for most characters. Uh, only characters like Axe Wielders, like this guy, can pretty much safely take it out as their 3rd room. A lot of other characters have difficulty. And there's a lot of reasons. Um, the the primary one being, you know, it's just so many enemies on the floor that it's often you just die because you don't have enough health regeneration or, you know, defenses to keep yourself alive for that many turns. Yeah, so I'm going to go through uh, vaults a little bit e a little bit quicker. And the reason why is because, you know, vaults is... While vaults is an interesting place to be, uh, the enemies there are of about the same level as late dungeon. So, obviously a little bit harder, but... You know, it's not incredibly difficult, I'd say. Uh, it just requires a little bit of knowledge about what kind of enemies do what, so... Okay, I'm getting randomly smoked. I'm gonna just pull up enemies a little bit at a time. So I'm dissecting the pack, basically. I'm pulling, I'm taking them apart. And then I can face Donald by myself. Uh, I would have brothers in arm, brothered in arms for him, but I noticed that, you know, he's not very strong. Um... He's wielding a scimitar, which is not a big deal, but it's not branded. Now this is a dangerous enemy. So Nicola is the cause of a lot of deaths in Crawl. And the reason why is because he has a huge amount of electricity damage. He can spike about 100 damage to you in one turn, uh, very easily. And the reason why is he has Chain Lightning, I think it's called. Yeah, Chain Lightning. So that does a lot of damage. So what I'm going to do is, I see that I don't have Aralak. Uh, resist resistance to electricity. I'm going to quaff a potion of resistance. I'm going to use my regeneration preemptively and I'm going to see if I survive a fight against him. Okay, good. So this game, uh, this time around he did not randomly kill, like he did not randomly do uh, a huge amount of damage to me, so that was good. I managed to avoid that fate and uh, yeah. Nicola, once you once you understand that you need our elect to fight Nicola, it's actually not too bad. Uh, it's just kind of scary because, you know, it's dangerous. Okay, so this uh, this Vault Warden is the red one, red or orange, depending on how you look at it. And his special ability is that he can lock doors. So what that means is, say I stand here, and I let him lock this door. Please lock the door. Okay, so you see this green door? It cannot be opened, so it's sealed shut, and it's effectively cut off my escape route. So what I need to do is I need to back off a little bit more. I need to hope that he doesn't lock this door. Okay, he did. That's fine. I now need to fight this, essentially. This is what it, This is what his ability is. So remember, this guy can close doors, this guy can summon stuff, and this guy can mark me. Overall, I think that this guy is the most dangerous, followed by this... Uh, red is the most dangerous, followed by blue and yellow tied up, and then green is weakest. Uh, though it's, of course, dependent on your position. Red could be the most dangerous, so the one you prioritize the most... Hang on, how do I say this? Okay, red is the one you often prioritize the most out of if you had the choice to fight all three. Blue is the most dangerous, potentially, and yellow is also potentially ridiculously dangerous. It could summon something very strong, and you wouldn't be prepared for it. Of course, all three, uh, most of them get stopped by teleport, pretty much. So I'm going to focus the red one, and that's going to give me my escape back. Killing him opens the door again. So I'm going to open the door, and I'm going to back off behind this corner. I'm going to uh, move forward. I'm going to make sure that the second these guys are flagging, so they're uh, summoning their friends, I make sure to kill them uh, so that they don't complete their stuff. Okay, good. So that fight, I intentionally put myself in a little bit worse of a position than usual because I wanted to show off the uh, ceiling doors thing. And yeah, it's still, it's still a very safe thing. Notice how even though I was locked out, I managed to use my positioning carefully. And, you know, I didn't take... I took almost no damage from it. That's great. So if you can get if you get yourself into a bad situation, I suggest you just stop and have a go uh, at like thinking about what you need to do. Uh, this is a cool axe. I just identified it because I was a bit interested. Um, it's not as good as my battle axe though. The enchantment is higher, but uh, this is an interesting thing about artifacts. Uh, the enchantment may be higher, but if the base weapon is not as good, then the weapon is not as good at all. Do not be fooled into thinking that a plus 11 dagger is your late game weapon. It will not be. Uh, a dagger is nowhere near enough damage to kill anything. 
Uh, I'm not sure it's Stabber, of course, but... Yeah, for this, imagine this character. He would not do well with the dagger. Just use the axe. He, I don't, it doesn't matter if the dagger gives you uh, R triple F plus. If it gives you, um, you know, like, 10 slaying. It, it doesn't matter. Not really. The the dagger will... And maybe the 10 slaying might. I don't know. Look, if it gives you, like, strength plus 8, int plus 10, dex plus 5, and it also gives you triple R F plus, triple R C plus, and, uh, you know, stealth minus. Like, that seems like a fairly unreasonable artifact. Even then, I probably would have just taken the anti-magic. And the reason why is because, you know, half the time I wouldn't even have bothered to identify the... I wouldn't have bothered to identify the, um... the artifact in the first place, so, yeah, I wouldn't even know it was that good. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a bit of a side point, but, yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't rely too much on the slaying part of your weapon to uh, carry it through. It's mostly the base type that's more important. Okay, so there's a potentially dangerous fight here. I'm going to summon a brother in arms. I'm going to use my uh, Trog's hand, and I'm going to let this brother in arms plug the hole, I guess. So these guys all have to fight this guy just to get to me. And since he does so much damage, he will be killing all of them, almost. Uh, so effectively, he took out more than half the enemies before I even had a chance to fight, which is great. It means that, you know, my resources are not used other than piety. And, you know, that he dies. Uh, the brother Nam dies. It doesn't really matter. He was supposed to die anyway. Uh, if you think about it, he has a very timed life, so might as well not. That's an electrocution battle axe. That's a not a bad weapon. But, you know, uh, I'm going to use the chopping one because I did say that I would use it, so I would use it. Uh, I'm only using the anti magic and stuff for, you know, other. Uh, for specific areas. So, for example, this glowing faint dagger. Uh, I wouldn't normally ID it. I'm going to ID it. PS R poise RF. Wow, that's great. Not that good. Uh, it's a dagger. That's why it's not good, though. That's the most probably. That's a pretty important part. It's not good because it is a dagger. Daggers don't do a lot. Uh, I'm going to just enchant this hat. Why not? Uh, it's plus two. It's not a big deal. It's just giving me as much. Okay, it's giving me as much you know health as it needs to. So Frederick is an enemy that is fairly dangerous. Uh, I believe he can use Iron Shot. No, he can use Bolt. Of, yeah, he can use Bolt of Cold and Iron Shot, which are very high level conjurations. Uh, so I'm going to summon a Brother in Arms. I'm going to use Trog's Hand again. I'm going to use my Lamp of Fire to you know see if it does anything good. It doesn't. That's fine. Huh. Okay, I didn't know that's how that operated. And I'm going to basically just fight it in this area. I want to kind of let my... Uh, sadly, this time my brother in arms isn't really tanking the damage, but, you know... Oh, I actually got locked out, so the brother in arms is over here, he got locked on the other side. That's alright though. I'm more than dangerous enough to... Then, sorry, I'm more than dangerous enough to kill these guys myself. I don't need the brother in arms, he's just there for, you know, flavor. Alright. So, yeah, there's just a bunch of enemies here. Yaktors, uh, they are dangerous, but, you know, you just treat them as centaurs. They don't even move as fast as centaurs. They do more damage, yes, but at this point you should kind of know how to treat ranged enemies. And they aren't amazingly difficult ranged enemies. They act almost exactly the same as centaurs, but they don't move as fast. So, yeah, there's not, not too much else to discuss, I guess, in vaults. Um, of course, until I mean vault 5. Vault 5 is very scary. Uh, I will actually be posting a completely separate video just for Vault 5 because I think there's a lot to talk about uh, in terms of danger. I'll try not to whine, I guess, but you know, I really want to get the message out that Vault 5 is dangerous just as a place. It's so dangerous. It's it's underestimated and it leads to so many people's deaths. They say, "Oh, look, oh, I can't believe I got killed in Vault 5." And then when I read their morgue, they oops. When I when I read the morgue of the um the, the player who just died, they just did vaults four and then vaults five, and that's like suicidal. Uh, I'm dropping the low health here, uh, and that's mostly because I'm getting distracted. Uh, Saint Roca, I'm going to teleport out for now. I'll explain him when I see him again, if I do. Uh, brand weapon, I'm going to not use it on this uh, on this chopping weapon, mostly because it's good enough that I don't need to change the brand. Uh, there's a plus five ring of protection in this. Um, 
There's a resist mutation, which I immediately am going to purchase. It is very good. Uh, what else is there? I'm going to actually put it on right now. I actually don't, I don't have a really good second ring, so I'm going to just buy the protection, and I'm going to use that instead of the poison. If I need poison resistance, I will just put on the ring. It's okay. So uh, I'm going to go look for St. Roker again, I guess. Uh, I'm going to use my general AB8 AC strat, so, you know, get the regen, get the ally. The ally died this time because it was weak, but that's okay. Uh, these blue guys, the, the blue sentinels, are not as strong this time, uh, in this situation, and the reason is because, you know, the, the floor is almost empty already. There's not that much that they can do. Even if they mark me, not many enemies will come. The most dangerous time to get marked is usually right as the floor is, like right when you're in the middle of exploring the floor. Because then all the remaining enemies just get dumped on you pretty much. And, uh, but again, you need to use your smart tactical retreat to... Alright, apparently I didn't see Saint Rogan, so uh, I'll just kind of explain to you what he does. He's basically an orcish uh, priest, an orc priest, mixed together with an orc warlord. Apart from that, he's not too dangerous. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go back to Lair, because that seems to be the, the ending point for most videos. Uh, yeah, so I didn't really explain what I'm what I was doing at Lair. Uh, I usually drop items I don't want at Lair One. There's no real reason for it. Uh, it just kind of you know simplifies the way that things are. Uh, I notice a lot of YouTubers they like to, or maybe not even YouTubers, just players in general. They like to make these like really elaborate stashes over here, uh, and like they just like sort every single item out. It's cool to do. But, you know, tactically it has no merit and it just wastes a lot of turns because you have to move back and forth between your stash. Uh, it's not a big deal though. Like, I, I don't think it changed my turn count very much. It's just, it maybe added like an extra thousand on top if you, if you made your own like, elaborate stash. It's not, it's, it's, if you, if you're having fun with it, do it by all means. But, you know, I don't do that because I think it's not necessary. So I'm going to start dropping some stuff. Um, I don't think I'll need Gormand ever again. Uh, I doubt I'll need the flame axe. I'll, I'll keep it anyway. Uh, I can drop the book. I can drop some food. Just dropping some of this food, not all of it. Uh, most usually when I drop food, I leave one big ration, so the bread rations, and then the single turn foods such as fruits. I leave one of each. Uh, that just you know makes my inventory a little neater. I have quite a couple of free inventory slots, which is nice. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.